Now then, here we are in the stunning Lake District. Look at that. I've set off from Rhino's sort of pass and I am heading up over Crinkle Crags, Bowfell, Esk Pike, down onto Esk House, Halls, whatever you want to call it. And then from there, I might end up going up Great End and then on to Great Gable. Just depends on time. But Great Gable is the place that I'm going to pitch tonight and I'm not really pitching, so I've got a bivvy. So me and the dog are going to sleep out under the beautiful stars which are hidden. But I've packed light today. I've literally got nothing on my back. I just feel like of recent YouTube has slowed me down. I used to be pretty fit and just walking everywhere and not getting those decent quality runs in where I really work my lungs. I have lost fitness, so I am out today and I am running. But yeah, me and the dog, I've got all his gear on my backpack as well, just so he can run light as well. And we're on it, we are on it. So we're gonna bash on and cover some distance and gain some elevation. So the first lung buster is the ascent up to Crinkle Crags. And first of all, you just pass on your right hand side here, Great Knot, which I think is about, I don't think it's quite 700 meters above sea level, but we're heading up to higher heights. The highest we've got today is both I think 902 meters. But, you know, we are out in all this and it's clear you look up the top there, Crinkle Crags, it's not in the clouds, so hopefully we're going to be able to see and I'll show you the beauty of these mountains. There's a bit of moisture in the air, it's just starting to rain a bit, which I really don't want. I have the bivvy, but I don't have anything for Blue barring a waterproof jacket for him. So we might need to bunny up in a bivvy. <laughs> we'll work it out. We will survive. the start of Crinkle Crags. Look at the view out to sea. It's all the way around, just beautiful. It's doing them lungs, that's what I need. That's exactly what I need. Push yourself. Because if you don't, your body never adapts to it. So you need to make sure that you get into that level where your body thinks, oh shit, next time I need to be able to do that, so I best adapt now. Ready. Yeah. rocks. <laughs> I agree. Look at this. Look at this.
here. What's up with you, eh? Come here, I'll look after you. Come on. going up here which is known as the bad step and you can tell why it's pretty uh, daunting when you stand under it and it's definitely a bit of a strong scramble we'll call it but anyway let's be getting up steady away you can sort of see there's sort of shelves all the way up just to sort of lift yourself up so it's just a case of slowly climbing up all right, let's see if we can do this. There are some really good handholds, which does help, but you have to be, just be very careful with it. There, <laughs> oh dear. I'm quite secure because I've got a really good handhold on my left hand side here, but let's pop you down. So there, stay. That's it. And then we're up again. But yeah, you can look down there. It's quite a long way down. But once you've done that, you're back to just a normal sort of steady away scramble. Oh, look at this, just incredible. What a place to be, crinkled crags. And just in case you fancy coming up this way, from this bottom section here, there is a way around that side, which just joins up on the other side of this section of it. So you can make it without doing that dangerous bit. Let me say blue, hey, there's a good lad. I just sent the dog round the outside of it and he sort of clambered up the cliff face. It's all quite grassy, so he was quite safe there, but anyway, let's continue up this. Blue. Right, go on then, climb. Go on. Good lad. Not that easy for me. Got a drone in one hand and you in the other. <laughs> so I'll just take my time. Good uh, core stability, this bit of balancing. There we go, we're up.
the back side of Crinkle Crags and it is a minefield. Look at this. Rocks everywhere. It's got a sort of scale hollow way down here. But it's lovely though. <laughs> look at this around this side. Just look at Scarfell, Scarfell bike up there. Lovely day. Cloudy but clear. So that's actually perfect for me running because I don't want to be too hot. Neither do the dog really either. I'm even happier now. I've found my heartstone. Another one to add to the collection. Well, I'm about three and a bit miles in. And I think it's 10 miles I worked out to get to Great Gable. So the next one, we're heading straight up Bofell which is a fair climb ah yes too much talking too much walking <laughs> let's get on oh. well Bofell has now turned into more of a challenge because I've found a child <laughs> he was struggling walking so you wanted a quick lift didn't you and then once we get halfway up I think we'll put you down and then I think you'll be able to do the rest on your own. Oh, I can feel this in my legs though. <laughs> Just that bit extra weight. Luckily you don't wear too much. Good training though for me. Gets my legs tougher. <laughs> hey ho. Oh, look, we've got all these powering on up there. Are you right there Blue? Good boy. I've forgotten these days. My lad's 17 and the last time I carried my daughter up anywhere was Scarfell Pike when she was three. And Louis here is five. And he's come a long way to get to where he is now. But these last few bits will make it together, won't we mate? What can you say? Oh my bottle! Well done spotting that. Let's put you down a second. Right, you stand there. See, I've got a spy. Making sure I don't lose stuff. Right, Louie, are you ready for another lift? Um, do, you want, do you want to walk? You gonna walk? Good lad, go on then. Yes, Louie. You bash on. Good lad, well done. Look at that. Strength and power in those legs. Wow. Keep it going, mate. Impressive, keep it up. So climb blue. <laughs> Good lad, eh? A little bit of encouragement here and there. Most kids can get up and do this sort of stuff, no problem. And Louis is absolutely nailing this to the summit of Bofell, which is 902 meters above sea level. Legend. Good lad. Then Louis, nearly there. You know that side, that rock is the summit. Which is the summit? That rock there. Okay, go on, then, Louis, you go touch it's it first. In the go quickly, quickly, touch it first. The middle of the rock. Sorry. There we go, then. The tribe has made it. What an awesome set of kids, though. These lot, aged between five and eight so blue sits in the middle of all those and there's one more on his way up which is louis twin brother well done mate and louis well done, Dexter. <laughs> and louis. Oh, he'll be on it you'll all be on it yeah. Yeah, we're all on it i'm filming now so 
Yeah, they're all happy they're going to be on YouTube, so yeah. I'll definitely have to put them on there. Yeah. <laughs> right, high fives and guys, well done. We made it to the top of Buffell. 902 metres above sea level here. Oh my god! Exactly. Yeah, no, Just no. awesome, eh? So if the clouds, will they be above us? Well, they are now, but sometimes this is in the clouds. The last time I was here, this was all in cloud, I couldn't see anything. Wow. Nothing at all. <laughs> Right guys, I have to continue. Yep, yes. Thank you. So, well done for making it. Thank you. We you couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> and Louis, you've definitely what done well making it to the top. Louis, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Awesome, eh? <laughs> oh brilliant just amazing kids like that getting on top of a mountain like this working hard to get here so total respect for them making it to that point but also just the fact that the parents are taking them out you know two lovely mums there that are pushing their kids to see more and do more in life because a lot just sit and they'll just stay on an iPad, on the phones, all that sort of game. And they never get out and see all this. So, yeah, well done, guys. Total respect to all of you. Anyway, for me now, time is ticking on. So I need to get stuck into some decent running. The problem is there's not much that's actually that runnable here. You can see the terrain is quite arduous technical and you just have to be a bit careful because you can't just go gun ho into this because you'll soon bust an ankle but yeah not many hours of light left and i have got a hell of a long way to go still i can't even say that i'm halfway yet because i've been messing about that much anyway we have got some free running ahead so i'll take advantage of it Tell you what, it's no wonder it takes this long making a video. It's worth it though, eh? It is worth it. Come on, Al, come on. At least that sun shines out. Glorious now. Let's hope there's no rain. That's the worst thing when you're bivvying. But not looking too bad now. Not looking bad at all. The biggest killer. That. The biggest killer. False summits when you're tired. There's nothing worse. And coming up this side onto Esk Pike, there's a couple, a little bit annoying, <laughs> especially when you've got plenty more distance to cover. Ah. Anyway, gotta mentally push through these things, and make sure that you are gonna complete your challenge, if you can. <laughs> it won't be a challenge if it was easy though. And this today, it's a fair challenge, it is. It's a challenge for me to not injure myself. Because <laughs> that is often the case when I go out running. Oh. 
and here we are this is the summit a best pike no more full summits ah, that is it we made it blue hey good boy yeah, come on yeah we made it and from here i can see where i need to go to now which is the second one back there this is great end and i need to get to the one behind that which is the top of great gable along the climbers traverse so again more technical terrain like it has been all the way Quinkle Crags, Bothell, S Pike. Yep, you get bored of listening to me, eh? <laughs> anyway, no time to sit and ponder. We have to bash on onto the next place. Can you tell I can't multitask? I'm a proper bloke. <laughs> I can't talk at the same time as doing any sort of technical things with my feet. <laughs> yep. <sighs> You'll only get fitter by actually doing it. <laughs> you can't sit at home and get fit. Keep getting out and pushing yourself a little bit more. <sighs> and you'll soon get there. You'll soon get there and you'll feel 50 times better in life because of it. And then once you get fit, Try and maintain it. Maintain that fitness as much as you can just by keeping getting out. Yeah. It's simple. We weren't designed to be sat at home, were we? We were designed to be out foraging and hunting. I'm just coming down towards Sprinkling Town down here and these steps are relentless and we're having that extra weight on your back as well it's hard on your legs you've got to really sort of keep yourself sort of fairly steady and slow because otherwise if you just sort of run off like you normally would without any sort of weight on your back you can't stop yourself and you've just got less time to make those decisions of where you're going to put your feet so just trying to be a bit steady and it's the last bit of sunshine it looks like it's just sort of about to drop down there behind the Great End and if you look over this way where Great Gable is no sunshine at all so there must be a big cloud oh I'm hoping for a fairly clear night though because I don't want to be I don't want to be caught out in rain really you know of course we'll survive and it's totally fine really but it's a lot nicer if you can just sort of chill out and rather than just be wrapped up in a, a big bag you can actually sit out and just take all this in sprinkling town looking as beautiful as ever i've just got one tent pitch there and another one up here Anyway, I've got a couple of snacks out to keep me going before the 
hardest part of this which is climbing up that massive thing there i'll tell you what the closer you get to it the more daunting it looks it is a fair challenge getting up that especially the route that i'm taking ah <sighs> it's good though isn't it it is good for mind body and soul no complaints at all and obviously the dog needs it too yeah <laughs> yep love it here we are at the stretcher box at Stihead Town and this is where it starts to get interesting thus far it sort of undulates up and down you know 100 meters up 100 meters down here and there but now it's a fair climb up to the summit although i don't think i'll make it to the summit today because i'm going to find a place to lay my lug for the evening <laughs> in this bivy bag ah yes this is the exciting stuff now tiny trickle of a stream here and I've got a feeling it might be the last point I can find some water so I'm going to completely fill everything up that I've got drink some first though well I feel a bit better now good swig of some water to rehydrate it's fairly fresh day and this wind that's piling through this valley at the minute is uh, taking it out of me a little bit. I've got my arm warmers here ready to put on if I need. And obviously I've got plenty of other clothes as well, but <laughs> look at the clouds. It is looking dark over Will's mother's house, look at that. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, look at that. In the same words, and it means completely different things. Just amazing. And from here you can see this crag, I think it's called, I think this is Raven Crag. Raven Crag, that is cool, isn't it? But yeah, we just have to work our way up and round all this and up onto the top. It's quite a it's quite a scrambling place is this, but yeah. One happy dog, eh? Not much of a path really. Just have to sort of battle your way through. But as usual, follow the dog. He generally knows which way to go. Ah, he always knows which way to go. Look at that though. Amazing. And you've just got the sun bouncing off this meandering river as it just passes down the valley down into Wasdale. Beautiful. Sorry Blue, am I taking too long? <laughs> yeah Bluey, hey. Come here. Bless him, just waits for me. Too slow. Go on then, get him. Gotta be slow here though. Not worth risking, but <laughs> yes look at this look at that that's Lingmel. what a fantastic angle to see it from just beautiful all the scarfell pike up there wow sometimes it just just hits you it really does hit you it is incredible Whoa.
Well, I've just made my way across all this scree section. You can see it's a massive scree, pretty much from the top. It just falls all the way down here. And then we've got my sat nav just waiting for me there. And we have to clamber up and uh, under this sort of section, which is great nips. And you come all the way around the far side and sort of make your way up to towards the summit. But I'm going to find somewhere to bivy up there. Look at this scree. All just working its way down this mountainside, all the way down. And it's a hell of a long way down there. Great nips, it's pretty impressive from this angle. And you're just sort of surrounded by all these crags all the way around. It's quite a stunning place to be and quiet just don't get any movement of anything barring a bit of wind no people a few sheep and it just sits <laughs> looking at this glorious outlook you can't really beat that can you you can't beat that you struggle to anyway but I'm gonna have that this evening hopefully I want to overlook all that. Just need to get there first. If you just look up there, there's a tiny erection. And that's Nape's Needle. It's fairly impressive though. But we have to sort of skedaddle our way around this. And as you can see, it's, it's quite steep really. So we just have to make sure, stick to the pass, and then uh, not going to run into any trouble at all. This is a face of concentration. All day when you're out on technical ground like this, especially when you're running, you just cannot take your feet, take your eyes off your feet. Because if you do, it's quite a long way down. Go on, Blue, get on. Get on. Stand. Wait. Yeah, there's a little section here you've got to clamber down. So, just make sure I take the time with the dog. Yeah, come here. Right, stand. Stay there. Stay. Stay there. Stay there. I'll just get myself down first, make sure that it's not too bad, and then you'll be right there, Blue. Come on, then. Stand. Section by section. Stand. Good boy. <laughs> Come on, then. All right, stand. Yeah, it just goes off a bit further here. Good lad. <laughs> hey. Okay. Good lad. Here's a good lad. <laughs> right, just wait there. Wait. Let me get down first. Just have to check for the dog that it looks as if he can do it. Come on then, Blue. So, wait, stand there, stand. There, there, stand. Good boy. He just flies down, thinks nothing of it. Right, wait for me again, okay, dog? 
I'm not as fast as you. Stay there. This is one reason I didn't put his backpack on as well today, because I knew there'd be a bit of scrambling. <laughs> hey Blue, so you've got a bit more freedom of movement. All right, get off then. All right, wait there. <laughs> Some good hand grips at least. Slowly does it. Right, it's quite steep is that dog, but I think you'll be alright. Come on then. <laughs> oh dear me. He just dances down, it's like now to him. Oh, I wish I was that agile. I'm just getting old and tired. <laughs> And now we're on some scree section, which is pretty slippy looking. <laughs> I don't mind running straight down scree because you sort of know where you're going, but when you're traversing, it's uh, quite awkward. There we go. Still cooking on gas. Not for long though, eh? We won't have any gas, will we? You don't need it anyway. I only have gas ready for heating my hot water for the house, but when there was that real cold spell about 10 years ago, and it got down to minus 16 where I lived in North Yorkshire, and my boiler broke, and there was not a chance I could get anyone to come and fix my boiler at that point. So I lived with about, I lived for about three weeks without a boiler and had cold showers in all that time. And the nights when it dropped really cold, I put a thermometer by my bed and it registered minus three beside my bed. So I slept in that as well. And it was, it was quite interesting really. I quite enjoyed that sort of time because, you know, realistically, we weren't born with all this sort of fancy gear around us keeping us warm, were we? I quite like the challenge of it living in a cold environment like that but yeah minus three by your bed it was warmer by the fire so really i should have slept there but i had my kids as well at the time for quite a bit of that and although i showered in the cold and my lad showered in the cold quite a lot my daughter went to my grand uh, to grandma's house to have a shower but to be fair she was only young so bless her she'd have frozen to death i think but we weren't born with hot water, were we? We really were not. Unless you live somewhere like Iceland and you've got these lovely hot springs, which to be fair, are just incredible to go sit in. Yeah, I'll have to go there again. Do some wild camping. This scree's a tough one, I've got to say. Went onto that side just to see if we get a nice shot of Nip's needle, but I don't, I don't think it was worth it because it's too hard clambering about on all this. And it's so loose. Most of the dog's just dislodged a couple of bits there. Yeah, you just got to be really careful, especially if there's people beneath you, because you do not want to get hit by a rock. I wouldn't really advise coming this way, to be fair. It's uh it's a way up, definitely, but there's plenty of other decent routes. It's just quite nice to see that nape's needle, but you could definitely do that and carry on round and take the safer route rather than coming the direct route. Whew. Anyway, <laughs> nearly there. I just need to get back on the sort of harder section over here where the dog's got to. Not easy. Definitely not easy. See what I mean? That looked pretty solid and it wasn't. Now there was its brother 
<laughs> and sister and family and everyone there we go we are back to some harder terrain <sighs> poor wheel drive that's what you need <laughs> makes all the difference look at the sky though hopefully there's gonna be some color in this i need to get up there and set you a time lapse of this sunset could be incredible right i'm excited now let's go gear on blue go on Get on. <sighs> tough one, very tough. Glad I'm out of that gully. Come up here, see if we can see into it. Yeah, <laughs> it's about a long way down there. It's quite an amazing place, but definitely one you need to watch yourself on. Not exactly fun coming up there. I kept on my teeth though, that's the main thing. <laughs> So there's a few moments I thought, oh here we go, slip and bang, or crack. <laughs> oh, glorious, glorious, look at that. We've come all the way from Sprinkling Town, worked our way down, all the way around this. Now, we're nearly on top of the world, but obviously it's a lot higher there. And I was just looking for somewhere just so I can lay down. It's uh, flat there. <laughs> it's flat there, but I don't want to be uh, sleepwalking. <laughs> Straight off down that gully I've just come up. <sighs> yeah, mate, I know. Yeah, look at this. Bah, it's incredible here. It really is. Tough one to get to, but... <sighs> Can I have a bivvy bag here then? That's the question. And don't forget, a bivvy bag's like a sledge on grass. <laughs> so, be straight off down here. Potentially go there, but might have to check out a bit further up. It's safe enough, really, but I won't be able to press record fast enough if I'm, if I'm flying down there while I'm sleeping. Oh dear. Yep. No words for that, no words. Yeah, this is the only flat place, but the wind coming up here, it's just too exposed, really. And it obviously could get a lot worse. You just never know, and you can never trust mountain weather. It might feel one way for one minute, and the next minute, total different kettle of fish. It's a little spot there. Not far to roll. <laughs> so around this side of the mountain now, barely a breath of wind. But as we get closer to the top, it's 
when I start coming over the top again. <sighs> Definitely was a couple of places back there, but I'll keep having a look. It's a lot easier fitting a bivy in, but on a very rocky mountain like this is, there's pretty much nowhere on top to pitch a tent. So you can struggle a little bit. That's what I need to do, follow the sheep. Hello, hello. They know where to sleep. <laughs> there and then we went to the summit and then we came all the way back down and now currently stood on white napes and there's some flat grass there sheep have slept there before so at least I know it's a nice place and comfortable blues chilling Ooh, as soon as you get up here a bit as well the wind picks up Yep, top of the world. Right, let's get let's get some food. That's what I need. Food and a sit down. It's a long day to be out on your legs like this. Oh yeah, it's just out the wind here. Nice. That'll do it, won't it? First job. Get some clothes on and keep warm. Tell you what, I'll flip them off first. I'll keep my sweaty t-shirt on, although it has totally dried off in this wind. One layer, but the main one. Get a jacket on that's going to insulate you properly. <laughs> yep. That is exactly what I need. What do you say, Blue? You don't need one, you've already got one. And a set of leggings. Well, I've got my dinner ready. I haven't brought anything to cook with, obviously, because keeping it lightweight. So I've just got a tuna pasta salad with some pasta to add to it. And really, this needs sort of heating up. And dipstick here didn't bring anything to eat it with. So I'll be licking it out at the wall like a dog. Anyway, not so much of a dipstick coming to a place like this and getting to see this. Look at that sunset. No complaints with that at all.
what a moment look at that the sun just lowered itself beneath those clouds and it's just firing straight at me just wow it's like a reverse sunrise I'm slowly eating my dinner with my knife <laughs> so at least I'm eating just watching myself cut my lip got the sun just laying itself over there on the Scarfells last minute of it before it disappears look at it it's just on its way over there now such a lovely glow of colour though there she goes down for another day hey and then I'll be waiting for the sunrise in the morning ready for the next day of my life what will it bring <laughs> what will happen tomorrow Ah dear, it is exciting, isn't it? It is sat in the middle of a load of mountains eating some monkey pasta. The tuna side of it's really good though, I've got to say. Worth carrying one of them. <laughs> yep, yeah. reflecting on on this, look at it. Look at it, that's all I keep saying, isn't it? It's all worth it. All the struggles and hassles in life. It's all worth it. I have a bed, all is well. I've got my head torch on ready because it is starting to get a bit dark. I've got this North Face bivvy bag, which um, I don't really like. But it's very waterproof so that's why I brought it up tonight and I put some rocks on that end because the wind is going to flip it off and blow it off this mountain with a sleeping bag in it and my Thermarest um, sleeping mat as well so that would be a very cold and uncomfortable night without it. I've uh, fed the dog and I fed him out of the uh, tin that I use so get gather that up before it gets blown off the mountain actually worked really well as a bowl did that and yeah that's about it inside there I've got here yeah, let's just show you see if there's enough light to show you so we've got the Thermarest Uberlite mat this is my seat summit pillow I've not actually blown that up yet because that's a balloon and we'll just fly straight off I've got a set of socks to put on and I've got a smidge net as well I don't think I'll need it but I might use that and then the sleeping bag is the Nature Hike um, ULG 400 so that should keep me nice and warm tonight it's a down sleeping bag and you know we are still in summer technically I think today is actually the last day of summer so yeah it should be warm <laughs> ah dear Anyway, back to this highest point on this little nib that just sits out. We've got the last glimmer of light over there. And this is why I always get my head torch on early because I always have a wander around and it doesn't take long before that sun drops, darkness kicks in and you really can't see where you're putting your feet. So head torch always goes on early. Last thing to do before bed, can't go to sleep without brushing my teeth. So I've got a sawn off toothbrush there, just to save a bit of weight. And I've got a small Sensodyne toothpaste tube there, which is nearly empty, just to save a bit of weight. You definitely have to sort of uh, reduce as much weight as possible, I would say, when you're running, because it really does play havoc on your knees if you don't, especially if you're going on rough terrain like I've had today. 
Anyway, I want to get in this bivvy and chill. What a way to end the day. Laid in a bivvy bag on the edge of a mountain, literally on the edge, looking up at a million stars. It is just so clear. You can just hear the sheep in the background, that's about it. There's a fair breeze coming through here and there, but nothing we can't handle. Just wow, absolute wow. And it's been a top day. Some good exercise, a 10 mile, pretty rough run. Quite hard to rain that, definitely, but enjoyable. And here I am. Definitely worth it. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep looking up and just enjoying this for a bit longer. And we will see the in morning. Take care guys. Morning flowers. Well that ain't a bad morning to wake up to. Hey blue. Overlooking Scarfell Pike. And the sun is just trying to creep its way around the back of Great Gable to me now. But I think I'll be packed up by then. A little bit of dew, some sort of moisture on the top of this in places, but it's not too bad. I had a little drama last night. I uh, moved position while I was in here and my pillow popped out and the wind just took it off that side of the mountain. And I literally jumped up and threw myself off there to uh, grab hold of it again and luckily I could because off there it does just, just it's like a grassy bank steep but um, I was in my socks so it wasn't uh, the most ideal situation oh you're drunk <laughs> I slept long enough but I did wake up a lot in the night I kept having to reposition my body just because I had my mat a bit hard to start with so I let a bit of the air out and then uh, after that it wasn't too bad but also the fact that I was running yesterday so having a bit of a achy body and I'm going to add to that today by running back 10 miles back to the car over the same terrain so yeah it's going to be a tough one I'll sleep well tonight anyway <laughs> It's a glorious day. Got the sunshine here, just sat in my lug hole. And I can feel the heat off it, but it is really windy and that wind is fresh, very fresh. So it's time to pack this away before it gets blown off this mountain. You can see it's only just holding on for dear life.
Well, that was tough trying to get all that kit away in the wind. It's definitely easier putting stuff away in a tent because at least you can shove everything away whilst you're in the tent. So all that's safe. And then you've only got your tent to put away. Whereas this, everything you're holding on to very tightly so it doesn't pee off down that way. Oh, anyway, leave no trace, all that game. We are now going to head down one of these screes. So the one that came up is just down off this edge here, but I might go off on the next one just for a bit of a variation on route. <laughs> I need to get out of this wind though, definitely. Down the mountain and on the trail for another hard day running. Ready, Blue? Let's go. Go on then. I'm going to navigate down this street here, but this side here has got a lot of grass. So I'm going to stick to that while I've got my good trail running shoes on with some decent grip. <laughs> I don't think I'll do any more of them. That's it. I'm done with that. <laughs> Get on then. This lovely, comfortable grass to walk on, although very steep, has finished. So now we are on the scree. So, steady away. And sometimes it's better to go a little bit faster and just keep your sort of momentum going and you sort of slide with it, but. section done now but navigate our way down here there's a little bit of a path that you can sort of see and then that's going to link on to where I was yesterday so from that point I'm just going to go on the reverse down section of the climbers traverse that's what it is down to the stretcher box get on then blue deep in stones. <laughs> There we go, back to the path. Not something you want to be trying that.
blue. Go on, get on. Climb. Nah. Climb. Climb. Get on, go on. Good boy. Just leave little sheepy alone. See you later, mate. Send the dog the long way around. Just back under Raven Crag here. And you can see there's some big sort of cracks and everything in this and obviously all this over the millions and millions of years have just slowly peeled off and then uh, if you can see down here we've got loads of massive rocks and some right in the depths of the bottom of the valley there are some huge rocks as well which obviously have tumbled all the way down yes it would be a scary place to be when something goes like that anyway I best bash on because look blue is just waiting for me on one of them can't really sit still with this dog because uh, he gets bored. Too bored. Steady with this though. Yeah, just look up there. It looks a little precarious. When you say blue. Hey. Go on then, get on. There she is, great gable. And on this far side, you might be able to just see a bit of red scree that just cuts through there. And that's where I descended. But it has been a pleasure. Lovely to get out, do some exercise, just try and increase my fitness levels. And for everybody out there, we can all get fitter, definitely. So just, you know, make the effort, get yourselves out, walk, jog, run, get to the gym, whatever it takes, just to try make that body of yours work better and then it opens it up to do more things and you gain more experiences and you fill that brain with lovely memories just from the places you can get to and fitness i mean potentially it could save your life at some point and also the life of somebody else's so just consider that and if you don't use it you lose it so <laughs> definitely get out and get fitter if you'd like to help me out and contribute towards the channel you can so by buying me a coffee in the link in the description which is somewhere there you can also contribute by joining the patreon but in that you get a little bit back in return because we've got a facebook group going on and even a couple of weeks ago i met up with uh, quite a few of the patreon lot and we had a, a really nice walk out and a couple of beers in the pub after and that was just absolutely awesome it really was nice to meet all those guys so yes, it might be something that I'll consider in the future, even though I wasn't going to be doing that in the first place. But, you know, I just like meeting people. It's always a, a nice part of life. It really is. The clouds are rolling in. Look at that. Anyway, get yourselves outside, get fitter and give as many hugs as possible. That's my advice. Anyway, from me and the beautiful blue, we'll see you another time. Take care.